So this is a recording about nuclear chemistry, and nuclear refers to changes in the nucleus. Um, and so that's what these uh, types of reactions are all going to encompass. So I wanted to make sure we were using isotope notation. Now isotope notation is a way of writing um, a mass number and atomic number for an element. So let's just choose an element. I'll choose um, carbon-14. So that has a mass of 14, an atomic number of 6, with the symbol C. Now, the mass number up at the top um, represents the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, while the atomic number at the bottom is just the number of protons. And by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number, you can actually find the number of neutrons. Um, another way that you can see carbon um, 14 written would be with the name followed by the mass and the mass is for a specific isotope. Alright, so radioactivity was discovered um, around 1896 um, when Antoine-Henri Becquerel noticed that his photographic films covered in paper would actually fog when exposed to uranium salts, which wasn't what he anticipated. He was actually um, doing experiments in um, phospholuminescence. And um, those properties wouldn't have caused the photographic film to fog. So he had two assistants, Pierre and Marie Curie, who were able to show that the fogging was caused by these rays that were emitted from the uranium atoms in the ore. And they later found these were actually beta particles that were being emitted. Um, and I'll talk more about those in a few seconds. Um, radioactive decay or nuclear decay or radioactivity are all the same thing. And it is what happens when um, an unstable nucleus breaks apart and in doing so loses energy in the form of ionizing radiation. Okay. And we're going to talk about some different types, alpha, beta, and gamma rays. All right, so the first one I wanted to talk about is an alpha particle. Alpha particles are given the symbol 4,2-He, and an alpha symbol is written like this. Um, and in this picture, we show a large nucleus um, over here. Um, the electrons have been um, omitted. And it breaks apart into the smaller substance and another large nucleus. Um, the original is called the parent nucleus, and the products are called daughter nuclei. Um, this small substance is our alpha particle, and it's the nucleus of a helium atom. So it has two protons and two neutrons. Um, its mass is four, and it generally... Um, it has a charge of positive 2, but we do, don't include that in the notation. And down at the bottom, I've given you an example here of uranium turning into thorium. Now, uranium-238 is a material that undergoes alpha particle decay. 238 um, is the mass number. When it emits an alpha particle, you'll notice that the mass decreases by 4, and the atomic number decreases by 2. The nice thing about nuclear reactions is that you can simply add up the values on the bottom on each side of the equation. So 90 plus 2 is 92, and you can add up the top, 234 plus 4 is 238. Now a beta particle, which is written like this, is um, a high energy electron that's formed from decaying neutrons. So it's a neutron and it decays into a proton and an electron. And this electron that's formed is really the beta particle. And um, it also is accompanied by um, something else, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, and the example I have here is iodine-131, and that undergoes a um, beta particle decay and forms xenon. Now the interesting thing about emitting a beta particle is that since you've changed one of the neutrons into a proton, our atomic mass goes from one, um, 53 to 54, so it actually increases by 1. Gamma particles are the most difficult to wrap your head around because it's not undergoing a change in mass or a change in charge 
what's happening is it's emitting um, part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and um, they're usually emitted alongside other types of um, decay. Um, one of the current uses of gamma particles is actually being able to um, do something similar to an x-ray, um, scanning large container trucks. Um, and in this picture you can actually see two stowaways in the container truck. Um, they say that they can scan I think it was 10 trucks in an hour, um, which is much faster than trying to search those all by hand. So that's one um, application of a gamma ray. Um, you can sort of think of these as being similar to an x-ray, um, in that they are able to pass through certain things and you can detect them. Now the next thing we're going to talk about are two types of um, decay. Uh, nuclear reaction, um, fusion and fission. Fission is when you take a larger atom and it breaks into smaller ones. So in earth science you often hear of the term fissure, which is breaking apart of a rock. This is breaking apart of a nucleus. Um, and I have a little diagram over here where we have a uranium-235 that's hit with a slow-moving neutron. This neutron combines with the uranium and temporarily forms a very unstable uranium-236. Uranium-236 then breaks apart into these two smaller pieces. We have krypton-92 and barium-141. And it also emits three other neutrons. Now, in certain fission reactions, they actually emit enough neutrons that this forms a chain reaction. So each one of these neutrons can now go and hit a uranium, turn it into uranium-236, and then they'll split into krypton and barium again. And so what you get is a chain reaction taking place. Um, these are uncontrolled um, reactions, and they don't follow the same types of rules that normal reactions do, where heating them up or cooling them down will change the rate of the reaction. Um, and all I've done here is I've just shown you the reaction. This is our slow-moving neutron, our uranium, turning into the unstable uranium, and then our um, final products. Fusion is the opposite of fission. Um, fusion is when two smaller atoms combine and form a larger one. Now, it, fusion reactions require temperatures in excess of 40 million degrees Celsius. And so they usually don't take place here on Earth because, well, we need very high temperatures. Um, now, the reaction I've written down here is actually a reaction that's taking place on the sun where we have two different isotopes of hydrogen. Now this is an isotope over here with a mass of two and um, this is called deuterium and this other hydrogen is, has a mass of three and it's called tritium. And deuterium and tritium when they fuse together form a helium atom plus another neutron and this is where um, ultimately all our source of energy comes from. Alright, so a few properties that are important to note um, are the different properties associated with alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles, or gamma rays. Gamma particles aren't technically a particle. Um, so you have an alpha particle, which is the helium nucleus, beta, which is an electron, and gamma, which is a photon. Um, alpha particles have a positive 2 charge, beta particles negative 1, and gamma particles have no charge. Now, since alpha particles are the largest of them, they actually move the slowest and are able to be stopped by the smallest amount of things. And uh, they would be able to be stopped by paper. Beta, a little bigger, um, it is a high energy electron but it, that one's still able to be stopped by your hand. Then you have gamma, um, which still is able to pass through water, and then neutrons, which can pass, um, are stopped by water. Um, this typically tends to be a question that appears on a lot of um, standardized tests, so this type of information is very useful. Um, paper for alpha, uh, beta goes further, gamma goes the furthest. Um, there's a few other particles that I'm not going to go into much detail with that are occurred with that occur um, along with nuclear changes. Um, you have the electron, 
which um, is our um, beta particle. But when it appears as a reactant, we call it electron capture. Then we have zero and one um, for the neutron. Just fix that. It's actually one and zero for a neutron, and then zero and positive one um, with the symbol E that's for a positron. Um, and you'll see these popping up in different nuclear reactions. All right, so these are some styles of questions that you may see um, about nuclear reactions. And so we have bismuth, bismuth 214 produces a beta particle. And we're asked to write a reaction for this. So what we're going to do is start out by filling in what we know. And that is that bismuth is 214. Bismuth has an atomic symbol of Bi. And we know it's producing a beta particle, so that's 0, negative 1, E. So the first thing we have to do is find our periodic table. We're going to locate bismuth. which is next to lead, um, it's number 83. So what we're going to do is we have to predict the other substance that's going to form with this. So we have to ask ourselves what number equals 83 when added to negative 1. So that's going to give us 84. And on the top, what number added to 0 gives us 214, so that would be 214. And then we look up on our periodic table the number at the bottom, and 84 is PO, polonium. Now, w one thing that's important to notice is that the top number doesn't have to match the atom. So if I were to look up on the periodic table, polonium has a mass of 209, even though in our equation it comes out to 214. Those don't have to match. All right, now in the second example, we have gold, which has the symbol AU. And this is number seven, 79, down at the bottom, and it has a mass of 195. Now in this case, it says it's capturing an electron, so we're going to fill in our electron on this side. 79 minus 1, 78. 195 minus, plus 0, 195. And then on my periodic table, I look up 78, which is platinum. All right, now in this case, you're given the reactions um, in symbols, and you're asked to fill in the missing part. So I have 19 is equal to 18 plus some number. So 18 plus 1. And then I have 38 is equal to 38 plus some number, so that's 0. Now, what has a mass of 0 but has a charge of 1? Um, an electron that is really a positron. Now in the second example, we have 93 is equal to 2 plus 91. 237 plus is equal to 4 plus 233. And number 91 on our periodic table, all the way down at the bottom, protactinium. Now, 4,2-HE tells us that this is an alpha particle. Alright, so the last part of um, nuclear stuff is talking about how these substances decay. Now, you've probably seen in math um, this formula for um, exponential decay. And this is the formula we use um, in chemistry. Um, and I've just given you the definitions for each of the parts here. So we have um, n sub t, which is the amount um, that's remaining at the time t. We have n sub 0, which would be our initial amount of substance. And then up in the exponent, we have the t, which is the time elapsed, over t 1 half, which is the half-life. Um, down at the bottom, I've just showed you a graph of this. And um, when nuclear substances decay, half of the substance decays every half-life. Now, the half-life might be fractions of seconds or millions of years, um, but it's unique for each substance. And so after each half-life, half of the original, um, half of the new amount remains. Okay, so if I start with one, after one half-life, it's a half. 
after two half life it's a quarter three is um an eighth and then a sixteenth and then thirty second etc so here's a sample problem um, we're given the half-life of molybdenum um, 99, and that's 66 hours. How much of a 1 milligram sample of molybdenum 99 is left after 330 hours? So we want to know N sub T. Our initial amount was 1.000 milligrams. Then we're going to multiply that by a half raised to the amount of time, which is 330 hours, over the 66 hours, which is the value for the half-life. And when you plug this into your calculator, N sub T is equal to 0 0.03125, and that would be the milligrams. Now, if you're looking for something more to watch on this, I can highly recommend a video from Nova, which is called The Island of Stability. And this is talking about how they make new, um, new atoms by um, essentially smashing together smaller ones.